Um, we now will conclude this part of the program with our final speaker. Uh, that will be Alyssa Bracha McMillan, who is a beloved member of our community, part of, I believe, the board of the Federation's Next Gen, so a uh, leader in the young adult Jewish community here in Detroit. Thank you. So, who here has a Facebook? How many of you think you're addicted to it? How many of you were actually on Facebook during this presentation? I wasn't trying to call you out, but... So, a week ago before Shabbat, I chose to deactivate my Facebook for many of reasons. When I told a friend of mine that I deactivated my Facebook, she said, that's funny, you're gonna be talking about Facebook next week. <laughs> Every once in a while, when I have a lot going on in my life and I feel stressed, I decide to deactivate it. It's such a good feeling not having to look at what is going on in everyone else's lives and to just disconnect for a while. Some people might find it difficult to do but it's the most important thing you can do if you find yourself attached to the Facebook world like I find myself. However, although I find myself attached to the Facebook world Monday through Friday, I don't find myself needing to be around, around it during Shabbat. I feel that Shabbat is proof that we don't need to be on Facebook or any other media 24-7 in order to be in communication with our friends and with our loved ones. Shabbat means a lot to me. I started keeping Shabbos around three years ago and I haven't looked back. And if someone would have told me that I wouldn't be using my phone, car, or anything else of that matter many years ago, I would have laughed in their face. And come to think of it, I probably laughed in quite a few faces. Over the past years, I have learned that you don't need to be in the year 2015 connected, when in fact, you're already connected for Shabbat. A friend of mine told me that he had heard from a rabbi, Tavar, that most people say Shabbos is a day off, but it's really a day on. Since most of the week, we are off to our surroundings by answering emails, texts, and we're not fully engaged in conversations at work or at home. Or we're not giving our spouse or our kids 100% of our attention because of so many distractions. So Shabbos, in essence, is an opportunity to turn off and to be on. And I would have to agree to that. Allowing oneself to be cut off from the mainstream Facebook world gives us the opportunity to be able to pray, relax, some quality time with our family and friends, foster new relationships at Shabbos meals, and last but not least, rejuvenate from the hustle and bustle of the Facebook world. We all know how hard it is to disconnect, so much so that Sabbath Manifesto, I don't know if many of you have heard about this, a creative project designed to slow down lives in an increasingly hectic world created the National Day of Unplugging that was influenced from the laws of Shabbat. On this day, Sabbath Manifesto encourages individuals to go by 10 principles. The first one is to avoid technology, which is hard for a lot of us to do, followed by connecting with loved ones, nurturing your health, getting outside, avoiding commerce, lighting candles, to drink wine, eat bread, find silence, and give back. There's so much beauty in these 10 principles that everyone can seek benefit from on Shabbat. But are these principles really so hard to do? There have been many surveys done which show that the world is addicted to their phones and technology. These surveys reveal that we are addicted to our gizmos and gadgets so much that we're even sleeping with them taking them to the bathroom, and even sometimes the shower. 
We are even showing them more affection and tension than we are showing our significant other, which I believe is very sad. Have we lost the importance of human communication? Or are we so caught up in the Facebook world that we don't even see anything wrong with putting technology first before our loved ones and our values? If we need to be connected all the time and you feel that you cannot disconnect from Facebook Monday through Friday, then just try to take time during Shabbat, which is really not that long, and challenge yourself to new experiences and self-exploration. This is the chance to be able to soak all the new experiences through all your senses. Because remember, we're actually on a Shabbat and not off. And I truly love that statement. For someone who did not grow up keeping the Sabbath or any type of religious tradition, I appreciate Shabbat and I look forward to it every week. I would like to share with you a personal example of how I spend my time disconnecting and spending Shabbat in the Facebook world. First on Thursday, I get into the mindset that Shabbos is almost here, and I start getting very excited. I start thinking about all the great opportunities I would have during Shabbat without the fear of needing to be connected. When Shabbat is finally approaching, I wish everyone a good Shabbos, then I turn off my phone and get ready to start my Shabbat. At that moment, I start to get into Sabbath manifestos, 10 core principles of unplugging. I start by giving Zedaka a charity, welcoming the Sabbath by lighting candles. Then I pray for my family and everyone who needs a blessing. After the candles are lit, I enjoy the wine, kiddush, and I eat bread from Homozi that was made over to Halalos. And I start conversing with all my friends and loved ones that I couldn't wait to catch up with and have meaningful conversations. During this time, not caring about Facebook, emails, or anything related to the, the need to be connected, I am just enjoying the company and enriched conversation of the people I care about. The best part about Shabbat is that it doesn't just end on Friday night after Shabbat dinner. It continues on a Saturday as well. So on Shabbat day, I love going to shul, hearing the Torah being read, and listening to the insights of the rabbi. Furthermore, somewhere during that time, the amazing smells of chona fill the shul. And I get even more excited about conversing with my friends over a hot bowl of chona and other goodies from the Shabbos lunch. After Shabbos lunch, I talk some more, talk some more, talk some more. I take a Shabbos nap, or just find plain silence and meditate, which is in fact nurturing my health. This time is crucial for someone like me, a social worker who is constantly in someone else's life, who just needs time to practice self-care. As Shabbat comes to an end, I start to think about the things I need to do in a Facebook world, but then I take a moment to focus on the wonderful connections that I made during Shabbat and how I can take those meaningful connections and what I've learned from Shabbat and apply them in a Facebook world. What I have observed about my Shabbat experiences is that I'm actually on, again, just like the rabbi said, by not being attached to technology or the craziness of the world, I am more connected through sound, sight, touch, and taste. Whether it be the sound of my friends and family laughing, the sight of the children dressed so nicely in their Shabbos clothes, the touch of hugging your loved ones, and the amazing smells that come from the kitchen as you anticipate the sweet taste of Shabbat itself. So if you have a Facebook, or you feel that you take too much time being caught up in the madness of the Facebook world, just understand that you are not alone and take time to disconnect and realize that Shabbat is just around the corner. <laughs>